Great. Uh, since since uh, you guys are, you probably already know this, but TimeScale is an open source time series database uh, that is powered by, by Postgres. Uh, and in fact, uh, we launched a little less than uh, two years ago. And in that period of time, uh, we've had over a million downloads of the database. Uh, we have uh, about 2,000 members uh, in our Slack community. Uh, and we've raised $31 million in funding so far. Uh, from top investors, including Two Sigma Ventures, who are kindly hosting us here, Benchmark Capital, New Enterprise Associates, uh, and Icon, Icon Ventures. And in fact, we just announced the uh, most recent funding earlier this week. Uh, when we think about what we're building, it's, it's actually more than a database. And the way we see our mission is that we empower organizations you know, like yourselves to really harness the power of time series data in order to analyze the past, understand the present, and predict the future. Uh, and these organizations include some of the ones who are listed on the screen below uh, who are using time scale production today, and of course, some of the people in this audience right now. Uh, um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to walk through uh, three examples of how time scale is being used for, to, to power uh, production uh, workloads. Uh, so, so number one is Cray. Uh, and Cray you know, is a su supercomputing company. And in fact, uh, they're one of our, uh, our for first users. They, they started evaluating time scale uh, close to two years ago. Uh, and, and in fact, uh, they were able to stress this database quite far. So they took a single database out to uh, 500 billion rows. It was close to 100 terabytes of data in a single database. And they saw faster queries with a high sustainable insert rate. And the key point is that this, uh, th like this use case is actually not on the Cray supercomputer, because that would be cheating. This is actually on a Linux box that ships with the Cray supercomputer. And so today, you know, where we are today is that Timescale DB ships with every Cray as part of its uh, internal uh, uh, monitoring solution. Uh, number two is uh, Nutanix. Uh, Nutanix actually, uh, uh, earlier this year, earlier last year, evaluated uh, a number of different options to store and analyze the variety of metrics they're collecting as part of their hybrid cloud offering. Uh, and they uh, you know, ended up uh, narrowing uh, down into choosing Timescale DB. And they chose it primarily because of the flexibility and reliability of Postgres. And in particular, what they found so far is that uh, this reliability uh, uh, it was, it was just found it was so reliable that they're now looking for other use cases across Nutanix with which they can ex kind of expand their use case. Uh, and number three is, uh, is Comcast. So uh, uh, Comcast uh, uh, uses timescale in actually a few places. Uh, one of them is to monitor a 120 petabyte data center. And uh, they, what they ended up doing is they replaced their prior NoSQL solution uh, with Timescale DB. And, and as a result, uh, and, and they did this for, for essentially two reasons. Number one was to really to leverage the power of SQL, which enabled them to ask more and more complex questions of their data than they could before, um, but also to leverage SQL to eventually power executive dashboards. So what they're doing now is in the process of expanding the reach of this time series data beyond the monitoring team to exactly to the executive suite um, through some of these executive dashboards. I, I think what you're finding right now is that when you look at you know, the examples I, I, I kind of talked about today uh, and, uh, and just the, the, the breadth you see in, in our ecosystem across all time scale users is that you know, time series data used to be this, this niche, right? It used to be this niche uh, and what we're finding now is that it's, it's quickly becoming a workload that's ubiquitous. So of course we see it in you know, finance uh, and, and in the data center, but also see it in industrial machines and in logistics and in web and mobile applications around eventing. Um, and also in newer areas, like with the rise of machine learning and AI, you see, you see the, uh, the application of, of time series databases and time scale in that workload as well. And, and even broadly speaking, if you, if you, when we think about you know, this, uh, this problem that we're, that we're solving, uh, you, you find that time series databases in general over the past two years have been the fastest growing category databases in the industry. And what I find, uh, I'm not sure this works, what I find fascinating is that we launched Timescale uh, here. So this is when we launched it, and this is just the growth of the industry in general. So what you're finding is that the problem is only getting bigger and bigger, uh, and in fact has grown even faster than we expected when we first, lost, first launched our product. When we look at this growth, and we, growth, and we think about uh, you know, the, the, the general you know, scope of, of this problem we're trying to solve, um, and, and why, why it's growing, we kind of point to two reasons. Uh, and number one uh, is, is the rise of machine data. And, and there are a lot of stats on this page, and it's a great graphic too. Uh, yeah. But I think the key thing to remember, the key things to remember is that 
uh, machines generate more orders of magnitude more data than human beings do. Uh, uh, connected machines already outnumber us on this planet, uh, and that gap is widening. Uh, and number three, machine data uh, is time series data. But we actually think there's also a second reason why we're seeing this fundamental growth of time series data uh, that's even, uh, I think, larger than this trend, uh, which is something we call the evolution of data resolution. And, and this is actually a pretty, a pretty straightforward idea that says that as computing becomes more powerful and as storage becomes cheaper and cheaper, uh, you, business naturally just started collecting data at a higher and higher resolutions. So maybe in the past you would have stored you know, the current state, of someone's, you know, current state of everyone's bank account. And maybe today uh, you, know, you may store, uh, as an example, every state of something. So maybe how that bank account is changing, so bank transactions. Where we're heading is, is a world where businesses store everything as a timestamp data point, every application event, service event, uh, a user event. Uh, and as you go down this spectrum, you know, a few things end up happening. Number one, you're collecting higher and higher uh, fidelities of data about your business, which lets you make better decisions faster. And the second thing that's happening is that you're collecting more and more time series data. And we think because of this trend, you know, there's actually something really big that's happening, uh, you know, in 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 the in the database community. Uh, and that trend is this: is that when you when you think about when we think about databases in general, we generally think about two major categories, right? You think of transactional databases. You know, this is your classic Oracle, uh, SQL Server, uh, you know, the, the core Postgres workload, and that's you know the transactional pillar. And then you maybe think of the analytical pillar, which is your uh, you know, your data warehouses, the Hadoop ecosystem, uh, which has also grown over the past couple decades. Uh, and, and these are growing into, into massive, massive, you know, problems and in industries. Uh, one thing we're finding is, thanks, finding is that thanks to these trends is that there's a third pillar that's emerging uh, as businesses are operation, operationalizing their analytical data and storing the time series format. There's a third pillar that's, uh, that's emerging around time series uh, databases. Uh, and this problem is something that we believe is actually uh, fundamental to the future of not just data, but also computing. And, and we believe what we're doing here at Timescale isn't just building like another time series database, but is actually providing the foundational technology for this future. Uh, 2019 just started and we actually have quite a few uh, things planned uh, to, to essentially you know, uh, move further along uh, on our mission. Uh, you're gonna hear more about these today but I thought I'd kind of give you a, a little snippet right now just to think about it. Uh, number one, uh, uh, we're developing more and more enterprise capabilities as part of our, our, part of our, our database offering, the first of which uh, we actually announced earlier this week. Uh, they'll be, you'll see more and more in the upcoming months. Uh, number two, we're launching a managed version of Timescale on the public cloud. Uh, and number three, uh, and this is something that Michael actually talked more about, is we're also uh, uh, in the middle of our uh, kind of developing our scale out, you know, you know clustering uh, capability as well. Uh, and in fact, uh, both cloud and scale clustering are currently in private beta. Uh, so if this is, if either of those are interesting to you and uh, you want to you know, learn more about the private beta offering, you can find one of us or a friendly time scaler and we're happy to tell you more. Uh, so in, in a couple minutes, I'm going to hand the, the mic, or the mics, if you will, over to Mike, uh, who uh, is our, you know, our CTO, co-founder, and an old friend of mine. Uh, and he'll talk about uh, the product capabilities today in Timescale DB, uh, but also what's on our upcoming uh, roadmap. Uh, but uh, before I do, I'm going to leave you with one thought. Uh, and, and this is a thought that actually occurred to us uh, uh, pretty early on. Uh, uh, and the first time we, this thought, you know, the first time, like, I think, I don't know if Mike mentioned it, or someone else mentioned it, maybe you mentioned it, we were like, is this crazy? It kind of feels crazy. It, it, is all data time series data? Like, well, let's think about this. And we thought about it, and we were like, okay, well, every, every data point has a timestamp. It's fair. And, uh, and in fact, storing your data point with its raw timestamp lets you understand not just what is the current state of your world, but also how that world is changing over time, i.e. trends. And, and number three, like, you know, I think one could argue that not storing your data as time series is actually throwing away valuable information. And so, uh, you're going to hear a lot, of, a lot of things this afternoon, but I, I want you to just keep something in the back of your mind, which is, you know, as you think about how timescale can maybe help, um, um, I, I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to challenge you to think about not just your core time series workloads today, but also 
the other workloads that maybe could benefit by being stored in a time series format. Uh, yeah, 